All right, guys, so I'm over to my buddy's house, Chuck, and he's got this um, Lunt Solar Systems uh, H-Alpha Telescope. This is their 40 millimeter, and this is serial number 700. Now, he received this on February 10th of 2023, and he had mentioned to me, because I live uh, about an hour and a half away, and he had mentioned to me that he was having an issue with his focuser. So today's a rain day, so we got the day off work because of uh, heavy rains. So I said, well, let me come on out and, and, and take a look at this and see if I can't uh, do something about it. Now, I've actually got one of these on order, uh, the 40 millimeter, and I'm... Uh, upgrading it they said it'd take a couple months because I'm upgrading it to the feather touch focuser so it was three hundred and twenty dollars extra to get the feather touch focuser and then another hundred and sixty if I wanted the uh, micro uh, micro focus so that's what I'm getting the three hundred twenty dollar option plus the hundred and sixty to get the actual focuser instead of what comes stock on here uh, which is the helical so the issue we have is if you turn this, it's not focusing. So, we'll take this apart and see if I can't do something with it. The other thing that Chuck has a problem with is the diagonal, and I see what it is, and perhaps he can just, uh, we'll see how we can get this fixed today, perhaps he can just get a new, uh, one of those retaining rings in here. Uh, I'll show you what, what's happening, why it's so tight in here. So, let's loosen this, and now let's, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a lot of resistance. You hear that pop? It comes out very hard. Now, if you take a look here, this ring in here, that uh, they use to um, obviously a, a lot of your scopes do do this today so that your screw is pushing against this brass piece it's actually um, I don't know if the camera's showing it well but it's sticking out and so it's actually hindering the uh, diagonal from going in there so it seems to me he could just get another one and put that in so that was one of the things he said he had, and he had that right from the get-go. As you can see, you got to fight it to get it in. In fact, what I've been doing is where you see the separation here, I've been taking this and kind of going on an angle and then pushing it in. So, so that's, that's one issue. So, with the diagonal off, let's unscrew this unit from the tube assembly. Just like that. And we're going to see what we can do with this to get it to work. Because again, it will not focus. Now it did focus, and then uh, the other day he went to use it. And uh, he, we were actually talking on the phone uh, about a couple things. And then I was telling him about the unit that I had ordered and what I was getting. And then he emailed me back and said that it stopped focusing. So here you can see the threads. that thread this into the actual tube. And here you see the female threads that the helical focuser threads into inside the tube. So, here you might be able to see that better what I was talking about now that it's off the... Uh, there you can see how that sticks out right here. That's the issue right there. And he's, and again, Chuck said that it was like that when he got it right from the get-go. So here's the end that would be facing inside the tube towards the uh, uh, front of the telescope. And this just spins free. 
It's not doing anything. So, my thought is, if we take this band off, this rubber band on here, and I've just got a um, little plastic uh, knife, something that's soft, and what I'm going to do is get up under it, just like that, and roll it off and see if there is, see what the construction is, see if there's something, because as far as I would understand, there's got to be some way that that's came loose. Uh, and there we are, guys. Right there is what I'm talking about. So let's see how many we got. Okay, so there's, now this is the hole that they give you an extra, Chuck was showing me an extra one of these to uh, lock the focus. So let's look at this. You've got one, two, three, four of them. So there's four of those little tiny, tiny screws. So let's see if tightening those up take care of the helical focuser. Luckily, Chuck's got uh, a set of uh, small bits, and I went through them, and then this is the one, a slotted, that you'll need. Always make sure when you're doing this that you have the proper, especially when it's this small, you want to make sure you've got the proper tip so you do not uh, damage the uh, the head of those those very small bolts. So there you see the head of those screws. Believe it or not, I just took the tip of that, um, I took that bit just in my hand like this and just went around and checked all four of these. Every one of them was loose. So hopefully this will take care of the problem. Now the other thing is this collar here, you can see there's a gap. Now I'm, I'm going to push it all the way up. I'm going to assume that it has to ride all the way up on this end. So when I tighten them down, I'm going to push it all the way up like that and then tighten all four of those down. Well, boys and girls, that took care of it. So I'll hold this and then turn this collar. And you can see that it is now working. Now I do want to say that when I tightened these down I assumed that they wanted to be all the way you know snug again you don't want to you're not torquing down uh, the head bolts on an engine but I just you know uh, would take this and then just turn it until it stopped nothing overbearing did all four like that and it wouldn't turn so I thought okay so then I went back and each one of them just backed off just a hair it's kind of by feel hard to say there's no torque setting obviously that we're not but once I tightened it down then I just backed off just a hair and then it now works So, what I would highly recommend, two ways of looking at this, do you want to put this back on? I would say put this back on for damn sure, because if this wasn't on there, this, this, this focusing band, it could actually, if these got, you could lose them. Now, I'm sure you could get them, I can't say that you could, hopefully you could get them at um, uh, Lunt, but we're going to go ahead and put this back on because this is actually going to, if it ever happens again, this is going to keep those screws retained. And that's another thing uh, when doing this, make sure you do this just in case they would come loose to where you'd pull that off and they would fall out. Do it over a table like I'm doing here. That way, if for some reason when you pull that band off, one of these would drop out, you're not outside you know, where the wind might blow it or you'll drop it on the ground, you'll never find it. So doing it on a table like this, you should be good to go. And then just to show you uh, that little hole there, or that threaded hole, is then for this other set uh, thumb screw that goes in. Now let me get it here. I'm, there you go. So 
this way you can lock it down so the focus doesn't move on you well guys I decided since it wasn't really working too good I decided to actually get this thing out and, and look at it and the way I did it is when this was in there like this I turned this all the way in which pushed forced this over and then I was able to get something under it I just got this thing and just kind of followed it around here and pulled up and once I got did that it kind of cock, went cockeyed then I just held it here pulled back on this and just brought it right out of there so let's see if I can't get this to be any better all right I'm not sure if this will work uh, but we'll see so what I'm gonna do is here's your uh, tightening screw thumb screw I'm gonna put the uh, opening 180 degrees away and uh, let's see here let me just compress it by hand there it is there it is it's in there we'll give that a try so wasn't enough I'm gonna try it so since I've got to do this I'll show you what I did so I'm I'm doing that just like that then find something to stick in there and just gently go around like that and then I get my finger in there back off now well, it's starting to go back in I gotta do a little more So now let me back that screw out. There it is. That allows me to pull that out of there. You can see what we got here. Just like that. So here's what I did, guys. The side that needed to be uh, adjusted, shall we call it, bent might be another word, as I took a Sharpie marker and marked it so that when I pulled it out, I knew which one it was. So, I don't know if that looks any better, but we'll give it a try. Make sure that screws all the way back. Just like that. Well, guys, I tried doing it. <clears throat> And it really couldn't get anything th that I, I that I was happy with. Now, if I had this at my house, I'd take my my uh, uh, air tool, cut that off with a carborundum blade. I've got a thin 16th inch blade. I'd cut that off right here because I've got that marked about where it needs to come off. I'd cut that off, take some needle files, and just file that up nice, and then put this back in there because you don't need this whole thing like that that's what I would do but Chuck doesn't have any tools like that and this is a very uh, hard, hard type you know like a spring type steel so I don't want to screw around and use anything else I told Chuck you know what instead of fighting this damn thing you got you got the helical to work you can put your eyepieces in there and they're staying I said I wouldn't worry about it um, just leave it like that well let's get this thing put back together can't use it today because again like I said it's raining cats and dogs okay so that's on now, just to be clear, when I was using this eyepiece in there, I was using that as an example for the, uh, the actual diagonal. Obviously, you're not going to put an eyepiece in there, so I thought I'd better correct myself. So, uh, let's put this in there. No fighting. It goes in there. And let's tighten it up. 
like that and then let's put our eyepiece in here let's tighten that down and let's see how this works now there it is so we got the helical focuser to work perfectly like it should and I don't think it's going to be a big deal that uh, the that the collar in here isn't uh, isn't really going to be in there well I'm over here at Chuck's I thought I'd take a look at the case that he got and uh, ha have you take a look at it so according to uh, Chuck the foam that you get comes with the 40 millimeter in the box when you buy it and then when you buy this case which he said was $89 plus tax then you take the foam that that the uh, 40 was shipped in and it fits perfectly in here all the sections so that's that's how that works and here you can see how my buddy's got this set up scope various accessories and some eyepieces and things in here